How's it going everybody? This is Dakota from the Techies World and today it is going to be another installment of Is It Still Useful? And in this installment we're going to be taking a look at Windows XP and we're going to determine if Windows XP in 2016 is still useful as it was back when it was still the primary OS on many PCs. Do you guys think it's going to be useful? I would also like to point out that Windows XP is being ran as a boot camp partition off of this iMac. Uh, this is a mid-2006 uh, iMac. This is a Core 2 Duo based uh, iMac. And I decided to boot camp Windows XP on here for my testing. And I did that for the reason because um, I was going to originally install it as a virtual machine on my MacBook Pro. But I decided to use this old iMac here for the simple reason because this iMac came out in 2006. Windows XP was still the primary OS on many computers back in 2006. And the hardware that's inside of this old girl is literally Windows XP era. So I figured if we're going to test Windows XP, we're going to test it right. And we're going to test it on pretty much the kind of hardware you would expect to be running Windows XP on. This has a 2.16 gigahertz uh, Intel Core 2 Duo and uh, it also has three gigabytes of RAM. So without further ado, let's get into it. The version of Windows that I'm using in my boot camp is Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3. However, it looks like I'm actually running Windows Media Center Edition because of the theme. However, I just downloaded the Windows Media Center theme because I like it better. So the first thing I thought I'd do is test web browsers. There are three web browsers here to choose from. Internet Explorer 8, Firefox 48.0.2, and Google Chrome 49.0.2623.1110 whatever. First off, I performed the usual test testing each web browsers under different websites. However, I also decided to add in some browser benchmarks. We're going to be using the speedbattle.com test for testing JavaScript performance, the Jetstream test for testing Java performance, and the Peacekeeper test for testing HTML5 performance. First off, we'll start with the speedbattle test. Internet Explorer is pretty sad in this particular test, only benchmarking a 10.13. As you see, Firefox is the clear winner in this particular test, benchmarking at 823.11. Next up, we'll do the Jetstream test. In this case, the higher number is the better performer. As you see, Google Chrome pretty much wins this test. Internet Explorer actually failed to run this test, as you see here. It wouldn't even load the web page properly. And then finally, the Peacekeeper test. As you see again, Internet Explorer comes in a very distant third place with a very sad benchmark score of 99. Google Chrome just edges out Firefox just ever so slightly with a 1,830 benchmark score compared to Firefox 1,811. The last version of Microsoft Office to work on Windows XP is Microsoft Office 2007. And I had no trouble using Office 2007 at all. It ran perfectly. If you're a fan of LibreOffice, the fork of OpenOffice, the newest version actually still works on Windows XP and it runs very well. YouTube videos on Windows XP actually play just fine as long as using Firefox or Google Chrome. What's going on guys? This is Dakota from the Techies World and today we are going to conduct a demo. Of if you want to do some video editing on Windows XP, the operating system does come with Windows Movie Maker pre-installed. However, I don't find it to be all that powerful. It'd be good for piecing together a couple clips, but if you want to do some YouTube content, it's not going to be good enough. From what I've been able to tell, the newest version of Sony Vegas to work on Windows XP is Sony Vegas 10. However, when I tried installing Sony Vegas, it just stalled out when it tried downloading the Microsoft Net Framework and I couldn't get it to install. If you're into music creation, the newest version of Mixcraft, which is a popular Windows alternative to Apple's GarageBand, the newest version, 7, seems to work just fine under Windows XP. However, I don't remember how to use Mixcraft and I didn't bother relearning, but it seems to work just fine. I tried playing a video that I had copied over onto the computer itself using VLC Player, and as you see, it plays just fine. This is one of my favorite TV shows, by the way. This particular iMac actually has a super drive built into it, so it's able to play DVDs. I also tried playing a DVD in Windows XP using VLC Player, and it worked perfectly. I'm not a gamer, so I'm not sure which games are supported on Windows XP, but this is one of my favorite all-time PC games, Golden Tee Golf. Hi, I'm Peter Jacobson, and welcome to Golden Tee Golf. 
This game actually was released way back in the late 90s, and as you see, it plays perfectly under Windows XP. Four! You might not want that much club. The wind is right at your back. The next test I thought I would do is try playing video from a local news station. When using Firefox, the video was unable to play for some bizarre reason. However, the video was able to play in Google Chrome. Looking good. It was a little deceptive today, though, with all the sunshine, but it was still on the chilly side when you stepped outside. We're going to do a little bit better. The last version of iTunes to support Windows XP was version 12.1.3, which was released back in 2015. We're going to see if that we can sync and charge my iPad mini. As you see here, it's able to see it, and it's even able to sync and even charge. Further, I want to discuss one thing with you, and that involves RAM. The Windows uh, version that I am running is um, XP Professional Service Pack 3, and uh, it is the 32-bit version of Windows XP. Now, that is important to understand because um, if you are running a 32-bit version of Windows XP, the highest amount of uh, RAM that the operating system will address is 4 gigabytes. Now, the 64-bit version of Windows XP came out a lot later. I think it was, I think the 64-bit version was one of the last releases of Windows XP before Vista came out. The 64-bit um, version will see, I think it's like, 100, I think it's some odd gigabytes or even a terabyte of RAM. So this machine is 64-bit capable, but I'm running the 32-bit version of Windows XP because that's all I have. So uh, I just want to let you know on that, 32-bit will only address 4 gigabytes of RAM, and the 64-bit version will actually address a whole lot more. I think it goes up to like a terabyte of RAM or something. It's really some crazy amount. All right, so there you have it, Windows XP. And uh, so time for my final ruling. What do I think? Well... Um, after playing around with it for the past few days um, and uh, doing these tests and whatnot, I'm actually very surprised at how well Windows XP was able to handle uh, all these tests that I put up against it. Would I use it as a primary OS? No. Microsoft is no longer pushing security updates to Windows XP. So that means any security flaws that happen to XP are basically um, unpatched. Microsoft is no longer releasing updates to Windows XP. That stopped, I think, like in April 2014. My final ruling on the matter, is XP still useful? I am going to say yes, but I don't know for how long. Uh, the software support is starting to wane. Um, again, as the software gets more and more out of date, it is going to get harder to do things. So as of right now, as of the date of making this video, I am going to say it is still useful in some regards, but I wouldn't recommend that you use it as a primary OS. That'll do it for this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from the techie world, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Check out all of the uh, social media accounts. I will post the links to those in the video description. And also check out the website as well. Blog posts to all new videos uh, are up there as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Now I'm not to see a scratch and read a card, read it, be the first to be an alien, and more than you